songs from the film, Georgia, recorded at KCRW a couple days after Christmas and performed by Jennifer Jason Lee with John Doe and Smokey Hormel. It's a rare appearance. She's not embarking on a singing career. We just uh, asked if she'd come in to share the songs from the film live, and she said yes. Jennifer Jason Lee with John Doe and Smokey Hormel as morning becomes eclectic. One, two. Buckets of rain, buckets of tears I got all them buckets coming out of my ears Buckets of moonbeams in my hand You got all the love, honey, baby, I can't stand I've been meek and hard like an oak I've seen pretty people disappear like smoke Friends will arrive, friends will disappear If you want me, honey, baby, I'll be here The smile in your fingertips I like the way that you move your hips I like the cool way you look at me Everything about you is bringing the misery Little red wagon, little red bike I ain't no monkey, but I know what I like I like the way you love me strong and slow Won't you come with me, honey, baby, when I go? Life is sad, and life is a bust All you can do is you do what you must You do what you must do, and you do it well I'll do it for you, my oh, honey, baby, can't you tell? Jennifer Jason Lee, John Doe, Smokey Hormel, the three live here in the studio. They are featured in the new film Georgia, which stars Jennifer Jason Lee as Sadie, a singer struggling in the shadow of her successful older sister, uh, a celebrated folk pop singer named Georgia Flood, played by singer, songwriter, actress Mayor Winningham. I'm Chris Doritas. Morning Becomes Eclectic on KCRW. And it's good to have you guys here. Thanks so much for joining us, Jennifer. Uh-huh. Thank but you so not, much. I good. love the show, so I'm very. This is like the greatest thing for me to be on your show. <laughs> <laughs> I have to say, I'm 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 quite taken aback by that, but uh, you know, I'm glad. No, I listen listening. to it every morning. It just makes me really happy. So this wow. is a big deal for me. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, when we we talked about having, um, you know, doing something about Georgia, and 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 I figured, well, Jennifer's not going to sing. We'll just, you know, we'll probably get to have a wonderful interview and all that. But wouldn't it be cool if she sang? And, uh, you know, you guys said yes. So thanks for doing it. That's really, (laughs) really ballsy. I mean, that's... uh. Yeah, with my voice. (laughs) It's such a great way to be on the show, you know? It's so, oh, it's just so cool for me. Well, I mean, you have to say this, I guess. Just doing the film uh, is sort of living out of fantasy in a way, because I've heard that you had... You know, fantasized about being a singer before. And well, I love singing, and I always, you know, was singing around the house growing up. And my sisters have great voices, and I wasn't really blessed, but they never made me feel ashamed, you know. So, I always wanted to play a singer, but I knew it would have to be a singer with not a great voice. <laughs> so, you know, a struggling singer. So that's sort of was the initial idea, and to work with my mom, and then this, the the idea about being having a sister that has a great voice. And yes. You know, I've always also wanted to do a movie about sisters because I think it's territory that hasn't really been discovered or d- done very much or very well. And um, yeah, so it's really fertile ground, I think. Yeah, and you, you know, in doing it, 
it's like you get a, a free license to to just throw yourself into it and if if um you know it's okay if you're not a great singer right yeah because um, it's sadie <laughs> right uh, but at the same time you get to find out if you can do it you mm -hmm. know or, or how you know if you can pull it off put it that way well yeah the great thing about about sadie is that it's not about her voice it's about how she loses herself inside the lyric and how naked and raw she is when she sings and i love doing that I mean, just I had I've never had more fun than working with Smokey and John and Tony and all those guys during the rehearsals period and and actually performing in the movie with them. It was just the most the most fun I've ever had because I really felt like a girl in their band, you know. Yeah. <laughs> well, uh, we should point out your mother is here. She's in the studio. Barbara Turner is here. And um, I guess about five years ago, the film started taking shape. Well, longer ago than that. But I guess in terms of script form, about 1990, you started up writing it? At 1991, I think, uh, Jennifer said, let's just work it, let's just do it, write something for me and Mayor, actually. Mm. And uh, she was on the set of um, Rush. She called, she said, I have an idea, so I flew down to Houston. And um, she told me this idea that, you know, she wanted to do something about a singer, and she wanted to work with Mayor, and she was ready to explore the sister thing. I see. Because she has to. Um, so the kernel of, uh, of the idea came from you then, Jen. Mm -hmm. And then um, we should also say that Mara Winningham, you've known her for a long time since you were teenagers, um, going to camp together and that sort of thing. Yeah. Um, and she's been a, you know, a, a pretty uh, uh, a singer of note here in Los Angeles for a couple of years now. She's been doing some gigs around town at, um, uh, at my place. and uh, Largo. And yeah, Genghis Cohen and mm -hmm. that, that sort of thing. Uh, and the way I understand it is that uh, this film came together at a time where she was really trying to define herself as a singer outside of the film work, and it sort of scared her to do this film because she didn't want it to be sort of confused with, with her real musical aspirations. Yeah, she had a difficult time when she first read the script uh, with it because she got confused. I mean, it blurred reality and fiction blurred. And, uh, I mean, a lot of... Uh, well, I got a lot of material from a lot of singers, uh, Anne and Nancy Wilson I spoke to for a long time, days on end. So their life blurred with Mayor's life. I mean, their home was very much, uh, Nancy's home was very much like Mayor's home. And uh, so it just was too confusing for her at first. And I think she really sort of wanted to push it off. And I said, fine, we understand. And she said, don't understand so fast. <laughs> <laughs> now, wait a second. <laughs> Okay, well, um, you know, ultimately it really uh, is good that it came together the way it did because you and Mare, Jen, you and Mare on screen, it works so beautifully. Oh, thanks. Yeah, I always wanted to work with her and she's always been kind of a hero of mine, you know, because when I was at camp with her, I was 14, she was 17, and that's the time where that age difference means a lot. <laughs> and she was the best actress at the camp and she would sing to us at night these songs she wrote on her guitar. And... Uh, I still remember all of them verbatim. I mean, yeah. everything about them. I was so enamored with her and looked up to her so much. And she was kind to me, you know, so that was such a big deal. And then she started working with my mom all the time. And here were these two women that I admired so much, and I never had gotten to work with either of them. So this was a big deal for me. Let me point out here, we are in the studio at KCRW. I've got Jennifer Jason Lee with uh, John Doe and Smokey Hormel and special guest Barbara Turner, Jennifer's mother and the uh, author of the screenplay for the new film, Georgia. Uh, what we're hearing are songs that appear in the film, which is directed by Ulu Grosbard and goes to more uh, wide release this Friday. Uh, it goes to nationwide release and sort of the next level, I guess, of, of distribution. Mm -hmm. Right? Um, this next song is um, is actually a uh, a Lou Reed song. It's one of a couple that we're going to hear this morning. How did you guys settle on on this particular song? There she goes. Oh, all the songs were in the screenplay. Oh. So uh, when when my mom was writing it, every song was as important as the dialogue in the scene, you know. And especially there she goes is is really about. Sadie, I mean, you know, it's such... I mean, I don't actually sing on it in the movie. I'm watching them sing on it, sing it. But, um, yeah, so it's it's a great song. So all the songs that are in the movie were, were in the screenplay, and we couldn't have made the movie without any of them. Wow, I, did, I, I really didn't realize that those were so integral to the screenplay. Yeah, they were scenes. Yeah. Because no one speaks during them. I mean, the song is the scene. Hmm. 
and tells you to, at least told me so much about the characters and who they were sometimes more than the dialogue did that's interesting because i really thought that they might those choices those song choices might have grown out of your exploration of sadie and your preparation of the character it all came out of the script oh, that's great we have a live performance in the studio jennifer jason lee with john doe and Smokey harmel one two three There she goes again. She goes. She's down on the street again. She She's down on her knees, my friend. She She'll never ask you please again. But take a look, there's no tears in her eyes. She won't take it from just any guy. What can you do? There she goes. You see you walking on down the street. She's gonna meet There she Better hit her There she goes again she goes. She's knocked out on her feet again she She's down on her knees, my friend She'll never ask you please again She's gonna meet There she goes You better hit her she goes. That's a, a Velvet Underground tune performance by Jennifer Jason Lee with John Doe and Smokey Harmel. I'm Chris Doritas. Morning Becomes Eclectic on KCRW. That's a song you'll find in the new film, Georgia. It's a film directed by Ulu Grossbard. It's written by Barbara Turner, who is also our special guest here in the studio this morning. The film, Georgia, brings to the screen a couple of driving forces in your work, it seems. Um, and I'm talking about your older sister, Carrie Morrow and your mother, Barbara Turner. These two individuals seem to be a very driving force in your work as an actress, um, from what I can tell. Mm -hmm. Always, yeah. Um, is it safe to say, as we're watching Georgia, that we're closer to the powers that are at work on your psyche as a creative artist than we've ever seen them before? Because you've got your mother's script holding you up on the screen, and you've got the inspiration of your sister with you? Yeah, I mean, I would certainly say it's the, the richest and deepest role that I've ever ever had, and um, yeah, and obviously it's 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 much more personal to me than any film I've been a part of, um, and I'm, so I cared about it that much more, and um, and it, you know, on every level, it was that it was so important to me, and, and Carrie helped me enormously with it. Um, and I've always wanted to be able to say my mom's words. I've been reading her screenplays since I was, what, 11 or something. So, um, is, you know, it just, it meant, it meant so much to me. And, uh, yeah, so you could definitely, I think you could definitely say that. Well, um, if the kernel of the idea came from you wanting to do a story about a singer, then Barbara, in putting the script together, 
and drawing upon the experiences you've had with Carrie and and uh, and her relationship with uh, with Jennifer and that sort of thing. How 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 did uh, how much of Carrie is in the film? It's not really. If if you met Carrie, you would not see Sadie. Um, they're very very different. I mean, C- Carrie literally sings like Janis Joplin. I mean, she's got that kind of power and that sweetness, and I mean, she's just got an incredibly beautiful voice. Um, the things that Sadie and Carrie have in common is their sort of their generosity, and um, Carrie's lived farther out there than most people, you know, would ever want to go. Um, but they're but other than that, they're incredibly different. The, the un- she doesn't censor anything. That's yeah. a lot like Sadie. Mm. And was it uncomfortable at all to to present this film, um, knowing that it was? You know, did it did it feel uh, weird for you to watch the film when it was finished? Did it feel too personal to exp- to? Because uh, it's so far removed it's in the same yeah. way. It's okay. very. It's so different than certainly. It's like a seed. Yeah. She was a seed. She was uh, part of its soul. Okay. Oh. I got gotcha. you. One of the things that I find really fascinating about your work as an actress, Jennifer, is is the preparation that you put into the characters and the fact that you you build these diaries and you, and you build these um, histories for the characters quite extensively. Yeah, it was her idea. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. But I was doing. I did like a, this cheesy Disney movie when I was about 15 years old, and um, I was having difficulty with it. And my mom said you should keep a journal uh, for the character. And so that's something I started at 15. And you don't even remember, do you? Yeah. <laughs> but so I, I do it now every time because it really does help anchor you. Because when you have a memory about something, it's something that you've actually written down that you have created for the character, and it's her memory. Um, or a dream, and just it—it um, it just makes it—it just makes it much realer and much more grounded and much fuller. It's stuff that you never see, but you know internally, and so I like to do it. Right. Well, uh, it, it, and these diaries are pretty extensive, the way I understand it. I mean, you've got sometimes several volumes on mm-hmm. some characters. Yeah, and some very, you know, very very little. Really. So when you're doing these diaries, they're combinations of the histories that you build for the character and interviews that you do with people that you find to be close to the character in some way? Well, the interviews are separate. I've got like, okay. for each movie, I've got like six huge notebooks filled with transcribed interviews. So they're they're completely separate than the diary. So you've got diaries and transcribed interviews right. for each character that you've worked on. Yeah, and then there's all the books that I read and music and I used a lot of art like on this I used a lot of uh, photography uh, Larry Clark's photography and Nan Golden's photography um, collages I made collages out of like some of the sex pistol stuff and sex drugs rock and roll that book and uh, I mean Smokey can tell you what my room looked like <laughs> so do you so with this stuff you, you build it around your room around your yeah, living environment yeah it's everywhere it's all over the trailer it's all over my room it's just because I want to be inspired whenever I look any place and sure uh, the maids had a pretty good reaction to this one. <laughs> so, so you really envelop yourself into it. Yeah, then. as much yeah. as I can. That's yeah. fantastic. Yeah. It's fun. Um, so are there any plans? Well, this is kind of a weird thing to ask, but do you ever you think about maybe publishing this stuff at some point down no. the road? I don't even want to even entertain the notion <laughs> because... <laughs> Oh, yeah, I, I personally don't keep a journal because I'm so afraid someone might read it, you know? Mm. And... Um, so the characters' journals I can keep, but I wouldn't. The idea of having them published then would—I'd be censoring them when I'm writing them. You know, yeah, like, yeah. Mm, this isn't good. Or, yeah, yeah. This doesn't sound right. And I don't. The whole point of it is to get me deeper into it, and not to, you know. I hear. I hear you. That's a. It's a really great collection to be building. Um, you're keeping those, right? Yeah. Yeah. But they'll never be published. <laughs> <laughs> they'll be in a I'm safe a deposit. Yeah. Yeah. Um, wow. We've got uh, Jennifer Jason Lee in the studio with uh, Smokey Hormel and John Doe and special guest Barbara Turner. It's a, a live performance in the studio of songs from the film Georgia, which is currently up and running and uh, goes into wider release this Friday. This is uh, yet another Velvet Underground tune. you are in case 
things you don't know. I'll be the wind, the rain and the sunset, the light on your door to show that you are home. When you think the night has in your mind, man inside your twisted and dumb hand, let me stand to show that you are blind. Be Your Mirror. That's a Velvet Underground tune interpreted this morning by Jennifer Jason Lee with John Doe, Smokey Hormel. I'm Chris Doritas. Morning Becomes Eclectic on KCRW. And uh, this is a song that you can find in the new film, Georgia. It's a film that stars Jennifer Jason Lee as Sadie, a, uh, a singer struggling in the shadow of her older successful singer sister played by Mara Winningham. The film was directed by Ulu Grossbard and written by Barbara Turner who is our special guest in the studio as well. Uh, the uh, the song choices in this uh, in this screenplay I think are are you know so appropriate. We already talked earlier about how they were part of the screenplay and uh, going into the making of the film these songs were already uh, understood to be part of the film and and the turn of events that uh, that became the film. In the preparation of the character, uh, in, in, in preparing for your character, Sadie, um, I understand you listen to a lot of different singers, um, Van Morrison, Chet Baker, the, the artists that you were listening to, were they guided in part by the songs that were in the soundtrack? They must have been in some... In part. I listened you know. to a lot of Janis Joplin. Uh, because Sadie steals from everybody and steals mostly from Janis Joplin. Um, so uh, I was watching her all the time. and uh -huh. Yeah, and Chet Baker and uh, Van Morrison and Elvis Costello and, um, and a lot of old stuff too, like Billie Holiday and Ella Fitzgerald um, and uh, a lot of Nirvana, just in the trailer. Mm. <laughs> um, when you first heard your playback or your voice, you know, in the first maybe uh, rehearsals with the band, was it was it kind of a shock to listen a to yourself? A rude awakening. <laughs> <laughs> well, the first time I heard my voice was when I I got home and I had about two weeks before I had to go up to Seattle, um, and I had a little I bought a little karaoke machine, and so I'd have like the real artists <laughs> doing it, and then my voice on top of it, and I called my mother just sobbing. I was 
I was just ready to kill myself because I sounded just like a cow dying, you know. Uh, especially on Midnight Train to Georgia, which uh, and Smokey completely revamped and saved my and soul. With. Rearranged for the film. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But my mom just said, just throw away the damn machine. You know, it's not about your voice. It's Sadie, and and it's get inside the lyric and forget about it. And once I did that, and once I got up to Seattle and was rehearsing, I just had a great time. You know, it was really it was so much fun. Um, <laughs> Well, uh, so finding your voice, that was really the key, wasn't it? Finding Sadie's voice. Finding Sadie's voice, and also because Sadie steals from everybody. So she she's changing her voice all the time, but what I realized when I saw the movie is the more she tries to steal or emulate from another performer, the more Sadie she becomes. Like when I did the Van Morrison song, I mean, every breath is his, every scream, every pause, every stutter, and yet... It's so Sadie, you know, I think partially because I don't have much of a voice. So even in trying to um, imitate someone else, it's it's me or my voice, or Sadie, which is Sadie's voice that comes through. Yeah, I keep thinking of Tootsie when, when Dustin Hoffman in interviews was saying that he w wanted to be a woman and he was so upset about how ugly he was as a woman. You know, it really upset him <laughs> when he finally saw what he looked like. Uh, <laughs> it, you know, there's a similarity here. But... Um, <laughs> you know, I guess I have to ask the question: Do you plan on uh, you know? Because some some people might be thinking, "Hey, Jennifer Jason Lee, she's she's here performing songs at KCRW. Is she is she going to do an album?" I'm going on tour, baby. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. You know, I mean, so there'll be a soundtrack released on this, you know, and there's some really great singing on it too. I mean, Mare has the voice from God, you know, so it's so beautiful. Um, and then there's me on it too. <laughs> but, um, but that was what's so great about about Smokey and John is that they would just We'd work in the trailer, they'd come over after work and just help me by just going through it over and over again in a really gentle way and in a way that was so safe and just, oh God, it helped so much, especially on Almost Blue and Take Me Back, where we'd just sit for hours and just go over it and in a very quiet way, you know. Mm. Um, speaking of Take Me Back, those that have seen the film, that's a hallmark point in the film, I think, and... You know, it's it's the kind of performance, well, like all of your performances, Jennifer, I think critics tend to fall down on one side or the other. There's very little in between. Um, you read your reviews, mm. right? Yeah. Uh, before I saw the film, before I read any review about the film, I read Time magazine. Oh, yeah. Yeah, he didn't like it. <laughs> Richard Corliss, and I gasped when I read that. <laughs> he didn't like it at all. Well, that was... <laughs> that's that's an understatement. That's a, yeah, a, I'm, I'm being I'm, really kind. No, he yeah. really, yeah. Uh, I've never seen, you know, uh, time, I had to check the cover. Is this Time magazine? Mm -hmm. You know. Um, it, was, it was brutal. Yeah, but you know what's really so nice is that... Um, uh, I won the New York Film Critics Best Actress Award, and he was the one that called Miramax to tell <laughs> So after saying, like, all these good reviews must cease and all that stuff, he was the one that ended up having to make that phone call. <laughs> so it was kind of sweet. Yeah, well, um, you know, the, what does that do to you, though, when you when you read something like that? It must hurt a little. I mean, it must be like... That huh. one was so bad. Yeah. It was so, so bad <laughs> that you almost had to enjoy it on a certain level, you know? I mean, it's just, it's rare that you read someone hating you that much, you know? So... <laughs> On a certain level, it's 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 kind of funny. I mean, you can't really take it to heart. I mean, there are other ones that hurt more actually when they're not as like um, yeah as angry, I guess. Yeah. Not on this film, though. Hmm. Well, with that in mind, um, <laughs> this uh, this is uh, an excellent choice of of material, I think, for for what you've done in this film. This is an Elvis Costello song. Um, Jennifer Jason Lee with. John Doe and Smokey Hormel live on KCRW. Used to 
do There's a boy here and he's almost you Almost All the things that you promised with your That's Jennifer Jason Lee, live in the studio with Smokey Hormel and John Doe. Elvis Costello's Almost Blue. I'm Chris Doritas, Morning Becomes Eclectic on KCRW. And, uh, boy, I don't, you know, <laughs> it was great in the film, but we're getting some great stuff here in the studio, too. Uh, you know, when I hear that, I, I think, I mean means second-rate singer. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. <laughs> I mean, what is what is a singer, you know? Um, boy, there's a crushing moment in that film when when Mayor Winningham, the character, of, you know, when Georgia turns to you and just lets you have it and tells mm-hmm. you tells you, you ain't got it, and I just want I just want to hit her, you know, <laughs> uh, because you know, and and and, and Mayor, as the Mayor, the person understands this because she is a singer, you know, who everybody, anybody can sing. It's just a matter of like getting into the lyric, like your mom says, and and um, putting your heart and soul into it, and making it true and honest. And right, there's so much else functioning there for Georgia. Um, sure. Yeah. But <laughs> yeah. Thank you. That's what makes it beautiful. That's what makes it beautiful drama. Hmm. Um, Smoke. When you first heard Jennifer sing, come on, be honest. What did you think? Well, um, actually. What concerned me more wasn't Jennifer singing, but was um, John Riley's drumming. <laughs> um, he's, he's also an actor who's who is not really a drummer, although now I think he is. But <laughs> um, no, I I, I really um, agree with you about Jennifer singing. I mean, to me, it was a relief to go and and work with her because to see someone throw themselves into piece of music like that just 100 percent commitment and that kind of dedication to the lyrics if half the singers i worked with who were good singers could do that then it would make my job so much better um i mean of course john does that but very few other people i work with can do that really get into the lyrics and um so i had no problem with whatever weakness she had in her voice because emotionally she I was there, you know. Mm-hmm. And there was a couple of versions of Take Me Back that we did in rehearsal that were even better than the ones in the film. And I was like on the verge of tears most of the time myself because I could really feel the desperation. What's, what's next, Jim? 
What are you doing next? Um, Kansas City. Uh, that's done, right? That's done. That we finished. That's um, the the new Robert Altman film. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's coming when? I think in the spring. In the spring, and that was uh, a lot of fun to do. And yeah, I really love that movie too. So I feel very lucky right now to have these two movies that you know feel pretty good. Robert Altman's been a a big help to you. Yeah, huge. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm kind of awed by it, actually. Well, he's a, an old family friend, isn't isn't he? Yeah, um, I worked with Bob uh, earlier, but many years ago as an actress, really, when I was acting, and uh, Bob got me into writing. Um, <laughs> okay, and um, so he's he must- an old friend, family friend. And then we we sort of lost touch, and I really. It wasn't until Jennifer started to work with him that I saw him again. It was years. It must have been 15 years easily. It must have been very uh, surprising for him or, you know, to see young Jennifer grow up into, uh, into the actress that she has become. I, I don't know. I just know he thinks she's fantastic. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You know, I love what Tom Waits says about Robert Altman. He's a good, sher- a, a good sheriff in a bad town. Yeah. <laughs> no, he makes everything so much fun. It's like Christmas every day on the set. It really is. Really? In what yeah. way? Just because it's like a gift. It's like the best present you could get working with him. It's so free and so alive and mischievous. And and you are, you know, you. I always do a lot of research, but most people don't want to hear about it, you know. And he not only wants it, he requires it. He says, you know, this is the bare bones of the character you find or you bring her to me. Um, so there's just so much freedom in that and, inspira- you know, it's inspiring. Um, yeah, so I love it. And I got to work with Miranda Richardson, who I've just been such a huge fan of for so long. And, uh, yeah, she's great. I just I just talked to her today. I miss her a lot. <laughs> but, um, yeah, so we just talked on the phone today. So that was nice. Well, um, I, I should say we, we've got here this morning a very rare appearance from these guys. Um, it was in the film. It's on screen. You can see it at the theaters. Um, but uh, uh, as far as other performances, I guess you guys did a couple of warm-up gigs in Seattle when John Doe had some things going on there, some gigs set. Yeah, we played. Uh, John and I did a thing at the Alligator Lounge. I mean, Crocodile, Crocodile Cafe. <laughs> Alligator Lounge is in L.A., excuse me. <laughs> Crocodile Cafe in Seattle. And uh, Jennifer came up and sang with us, and that was really exciting. Mm. It was my first time ever singing with people there. Wow. And- <laughs> I was so terrified before I went up, you know, just, I, I had no spit in my mouth, I, I was afraid to drink water in case I'd have to go to the bathroom, I couldn't breathe, and then this woman in the audience turned to me and she said, you look really nervous, are you going to sing, are you going to sing? And I said, yeah, I think so, and she said, oh my god, John Doe is a god, he is a god, I hope you don't fuck it up, oh, you can't say that on the air, can you? Because he's just a god, you know, and I was like, I know, I know. Well, that's a quote, you're quoting someone. Yeah, I was quoting someone. <laughs> And uh, anyway, but then I got up there, and after two seconds, I didn't want to get off the stage. <laughs> she was really good. She took right to it, and the audience just loved her. Getting really into it. Then. Yeah. Wow. Um, <laughs> okay, we're going to close with um, one that turns up in a pretty funny part of the film where Sadie and band are having to play a wedding to pay the rent. Uh, and we're just going to let people hear this one. <laughs> you know, it was great. Ha- thank you so much for coming thank in. Thank you so oh, much. Thank you. Uh, Barbara Turner is in the studio. Thank you. Um, thank Smokey you. Hormel, John Doe, and Jennifer Jason Lee. Thanks. Go! Oi, 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 yes, 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 mein Eis geht mir rasch euer Smog dir. Oi, 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 jasse, 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 jasse. Dann mal gesitzt not als ein Wart auf dir. Oi, 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 jasse, 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 jasse. Ich will am jeder Nacht noch von dir. Und gib dir jasse, hora, nach dem Mulle, tora, jasse.
listening to a live performance from Jennifer Jason Lee with John Doe and Smokey Hormel, recorded the week after Christmas here at KCRW. Songs from the new film Georgia, written by Barbara Turner, directed by Ulu Grossbard. The film is currently up at Lemley Sunset 5 Theater and goes into wide release this Friday, January 12th. If you are a subscriber to KCRW, we have five pairs of tickets to attend any screening of Georgia at Lemley Sunset 5, good through the run of the engagement. Call us with your membership number at 310-452-6700. Five pairs of tickets up for grabs, first come, first serve. 310-452-6700. Tomorrow on the show, Loudon Wainwright in live performance. Film composer James Newton Howard is here Thursday. Friday in the 10 o'clock hour, Dave Robbins with music from the new Tim Robbins film, Dead Man Walking. And John Hyatt in live performance Friday the 12th at 11.15. Lisa Loeb is here Tuesday, January 16th. Shark Boy the 17th. Idaho, January 18th. Monitor Radio is up next. My thanks to Paul Shapiro for assisting me. My producers, Tracy Serratine. I'm Chris Doritas, back tomorrow from 9 to noon. Theo Mondel engineered this live broadcast. It's coming up on 12 noon. <laughs>